After the United States Chess Championship, there was, a, there was a moment where he lost multiple games in a row. He came back to his hotel room and, and, and broke a couple of things. He says, damaged a couple of things. He said there was a remote. Uh, there may or may not have been a lamp. A couple of things were damaged. He paid a fine. He apologized profusely, paid the fine, and was given a 99% assurance that he would be allowed back in the hotel itself. And then by extension, get a conversation started with the club about getting reinstated. So, so let's make something very clear, guys. Um, after I was banned from the hotel, um, I was never told by St. Louis Chess Club that I would be, that I was banned, right? They only decided um, to, to put an official ban in 2024 when I was trying to reach out to them to ask why they didn't invite me to any tournaments. So they only decided to make this public ban because I was going to go public about them blacklisting me. So they have been banning me but they were too afraid to do it publicly in the past because they had no excuse. So essentially now that they have this excuse, they're hiding behind it when in reality, you know, they're banning me for other, you know, commercial and financial reasons. Now, let's take a, let's, let's recap. So Hans plays the US Championship 2023, breaks a few things in his hotel room, tries to contact the club like- So it seems like, so guys, guys, I have a question. So now that we know that Irina Crush kicked the wall, like broke a wall, like a hole in the wall, is that not important information? Don't you guys think that's a double standard if she also damaged serious damage and, and she didn't even have to pay, pay for it herself? Isn't that a very interesting contrast of how I'm sure if you look at the history of 10 years, there's people who have damaged, but they haven't been banned because of it. 20 times, multiple occasions, apologizing, asking for a second chance, uh, finally getting a response essentially that says, you know, we'll, we'll consider it. We're sorry we haven't responded. So, so basically let's, so, Levy misinterprets a clear thing of the, the timeline here. Um, I, the, the time that I found out that I was uninvited from events in 2024 was publicly. They released a public letter without telling me anything. They sent me a private letter at the exact same time that they posted a public letter. So I, this was news to me, just like everyone else. It's you, it wasn't a priority, and now they just went public with this. That's, that's what Hans says in this 21 minute video, uh, which, uh, which is here on the screen. That's what he says. So I, but the thing, when I, when I say how much I paid, it makes it sound worse than it actually is. But I would say that when I paid, the actual value of what was broken was about 10% 10, 10 of that. Okay, the I, I was fined $5,000, but I'm, the, the value of what was broken was at maximum 500, maximum 500. If I'm being completely transparent, maximum 500. Like I have, there's, there's photos and there's like, okay, there's a full report. I was told by the, this is, this is like the most important thing guys. So I was told that, that there was a 99% chance that I'd be, that I'd be able to return to the hotel. And three days later, I was told that my, my request was denied. So I want St. Louis to publicly address whether they intervened with the hotel to make sure I was banned. Because my personal opinion is that if the hotel says to me, there's 99% chance, and then, they, and then they ban me, the only reason that they could have had such a change of heart was that if someone intervened, and the only person that could have intervened was the club. Why care about getting back? Because they're using this as an excuse to blacklist me. Three days later, my request was denied, and they have not invited me to a single tournament in all 23 and won't in 2024. Okay, that's a lot to unpack. Let me summarize that for you. Hans is saying, the St. Louis Chess Club was going to blacklist him and lead him on and not respond to him. I have the incident report right here. Okay, so there was a, I want to you. So there was a lamp. Okay, a lamp was broken. Then there is a glass that was broken from a painting. The glass was on the couch. From the pictures I see, no damage to the couch was done. Then I see one remote was broken. A phone was broken. A second remote was broken, an umbrella was broken, okay, and some food was left. So, and I was charged $5,000 for this. So f I was charged five grand for some glass, a lamp, and some broken remotes, an umbrella, and an ironing board. That's not five grand, okay? That's not five grand at all. That's like, a, that's a complete... Like, I didn't break a hole in the wall. No, I did not break a painting. The painting, the painting is unbroken. I have a photo. So the painting is, is unharmed. 
if you can see, the painting is unharmed, but the glass frame of the painting, I, I was broken and it fell onto the couch. But it's glass of a painting. You can replace a frame. It's, this is not like I'm breaking like marble and tiles and like doing, taking a hammer, you know, like I would say that the, the, the maximum cost to replace is $500, $500 maximum. And okay, maybe they, okay, fine. Also, let's say this, they have to take two days or three days to replace it. So they can't rent the room. The room is about 250 bucks per night. So maybe another 750, let me do the five, like five grand is, is like, they're profiting from this, you know, uh, that is like, and I will also say another thing, guys. I also offered, I also offered to pay a security deposit anytime I would stay at the hotel. Like I said to them, like, let me know. I will pay a security deposit of any amount just to stay at the hotel. I will, I will sign a waiver. I will sign whatever you want, you know? Um, wow, I don't even know where to start. I think a good place to start is, I would like to think, you all kind of feel this way, I would like to think I have the optimistic stance of, and I said this time and time again, you can screw up a certain amount of times in life as a young man or woman, right? Like you, you can, you can get a teenager, you can do some dumb stuff. We need to get dumb stuff out of our system so we don't do it at a time in life when we're already in a, in a high position or we're old enough. But the thing is, guys, is that as a sportsman, like, I, like, let's, let's look at, of course, I'm very sorry. People say I'm not apologetic or I didn't apologize or I'm not, I'm, I, I seriously regret my actions, but like, I, I'm sorry, but if I did this at the chess club or I did this during a game or, or imagine I was playing a chess game and I went to my opponent and I took their king and I broke it in half. And then imagine I said to my opponent, let's go to the bathroom and fight. Imagine how the, I think I'd be bad, no? Like, like imagine during the game, I just took, let me, let me show you. Imagine during the game, on my modus clock, I just took the king and I was like, breaking her king. And I said, let's go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. Like on live camera, like imagine, imagine like what, what, what happened to me, you know, you know, like, Let's, let's be honest here. This is, this is, you know, why did, why did they block this to me in 2023? Why did they suddenly, they, they still need, they have so many unanswered questions, you know? And I, I, I just don't know how this, like, how does all the craziest stuff in the chess world happen to Hans? Well, I, I wonder, I wonder where it all started. I wonder what I did. Like, I'm sure he's not the first player to break something in a hotel room. I'm sure he's not the first chess well, now we've discovered that Irina Crush picked a hole in the wall and the club paid the damages for her. He just, you know, and, and that's fine. But how does this, how is it always the biggest stage and the biggest spectacle with Hans, like, at the forefront? Because, because, Levy, guess what? There are people in the chess world that have unchecked power and no accountability. So they become emboldened to do crazy things. I, I'm sure that if I was, if I was a basket, if I was like a basketball player or a tennis player, They'd be calling me like, wow, he's so passionate. He just loves the game so much. Like if it was any other sport, they'd be calling me like, wow, you know, he's young, but he makes a mistake. He's just passionate. He loves the game. He's going to really use this passion and, and, and harness it in the right way. Any other sport, you know, other than the stupid fucking boring chess game, like they'd be, the, you know, they wouldn't interpret it like, like this, you know, grave sin, you know, you think that. They'd be villainized for some stupid, you know, passionate mistake. Your favorite athletes time and time again get into something. I, like, I just wish it would stop. Like, I'm being serious. I wish this didn't exist. I wish Hans would just go play tournaments and win. I wish that I, wish that I wasn't attacked by everyone. I, I wish that I could play chess normally. I'm like tired. Like, I'm emotionally, I'm drained. Every sport has a bad boy, a bad girl, but like, you know, mostly, you know, like tennis, you know, Kyrgios, I'm pretty sure is like the bad boy of tennis, you know, and like all this stuff. And, and I don't know, like what, what other sports, all right? You always got like an athlete that's like constantly like, oh my God, not again. And this is like, this is, this is Hans in the chat. For example, all these, all these basketball players are getting in fights. They're like, all these basketball players are going to strip clubs and getting, doing all this stuff. And, 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 and what? Like, who is that basketball player who was on Instagram live with a gun? Who is that, um, who is that guy who, who had a gun on Instagram live? It was still, uh, yeah, John Morant. Like, you have John Morant, you know, like, Instagram live, like, like, look at me, you know, I'm so cool. You know, the summary of this for me when I saw this is 
it sucks that in the chess world we have an invitation only ecosystem. Uh, and it sucks if Hans is not going to get invitations to places. You know, if, if he is legitimate and he's going to have a legitimate rise to. What do you mean if he is legitimate? Or what if, if I have a legitimate rise? It's been proven by FIDE, by chess.com, by everyone that my entire over the board chess career has been legitimate. So I don't like this wording. I don't, why don't you say that it is legitimate and it always will be legitimate? Like it's been proven by even the people who completely hate me that I'm innocent. FIDE report, chess.com, like even chess.com. Who, who's not, to, it's not in their best interest to say that, to said my entire over the board chess career has been clear. And is going to affect that. On the flip side, Hans has to get it together, man. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be the ultimate authority and giving advice out here, but this has to stop. There has to be like less distractions. There has to be less BS. Because when you have stuff like this weighing you down, this is just, I mean, it's got to end or else it's going to be really difficult to capture a consistent audience and fan base and then get, in, get invited to places to play. All right. And I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it together. I've been, you know, I've been like kind of rooting for the guy because I, uh, I feel for him. The last year must have been completely insane, you know? But this sucks, man. I'm bummed. I'm bummed to see this stuff. You know, you know, honestly, them them banning me publicly is actually not even a blow to me. And I'm actually happy that they did this because first of all, it shows how powerful chess institutions abuse their power. And I would have been banned anyways because they were instituting a shadow ban. So for me personally, there's no difference between a shadow ban and a public ban. So this honestly has no effect on my life or, or tournaments other than motivating me and invigorating me and showing the world, uh, you know, how great my story will be when I overcome all of this. Today was a wild day in the chess world. There was a bunch of other stuff that happened too, which I will talk about, but um, that's my opinion. That is my opinion. And I, I don't know. I really feel like if, if, if Hans can't figure it out soon, if he can't stay like a consistent course of action, his words, his behavior, his actions, if it's all over the place like this and there's constantly being thrown out, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he'll be just fine, but it, it bums me out. It bums me out a lot. Uh, that's all. He's changed the good guy persona, guys. I'm just myself. There's no persona, okay? Like, two days before this, I'm donating to charity, and people are saying I'm such a great guy. The next day, suddenly, I'm a terrible guy. You know, like, uh, people's perception of me uh, is only based on their actual perspective, you know? Um, um, like, if, if I donate $10,000 to young chess talents over the, all over the world, you know, I'm a bad guy. If I donate $600 to, you know, Nigerian kids so they can have health insurance on the chest, I'm a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I don't, you know, 